Okay, I looked it up. There's 19 days. This is the 19th day. So yes, this is the final day. And I guess it will be the final episode because I'm probably just going to want to steamroll through it. So I've been... I love this game. It's it's amazing. It's I love it. <laughs> I don't know. But I guess it makes sense. It's the end of December. New year. But hopefully we get some answers about some shit. <laughs> oh, well, let's see. Uh, Gil is in the back getting everything ready. I'll go grab some food I've ordered. They only agreed to work on New Year's. If I went to pick it up myself. Are you alright? I'm scared. Gabby will show up at any minute. <laughs> Relax, everything will be alright. I can assure you of that. Uh, drink something. Maybe that will cheer you up. Maybe. Uh, I'll leave you for a bit, but keep your chin up. If you uh, if you get through this, I'll give you, I don't know, a hug. Does that work? <laughs> a, a hug? <laughs> a big one. A reward for everything said and done. Gotta go. You can do it. All right. Oh boy. Everything is fine. You've been avoiding this for all f for these all these years. Now it's time to face it head on. Yeah, everything's fine. Everything will be better after I talk to Gabby. Boss might even give me a hug. <laughs> I'm okay. Hi, hello, Gabby. Uh, come in. Excuse me. Uh, welcome to uh, oh Jill and Gabby. Hey, you talk first. <laughs> no, I. Well, this is so awkward. <laughs> uh, seven days ago, I got a letter. And even odder than getting a letter is the fact that it is from your sister. A what? Uh, my sister sent you a letter. That's the first I've heard of it. What did it say? I don't know. I never opened it. At least not until now. Huh? I figured I could should read it with you. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's read it. Alright then. Sorry. Just, just that. Aww. <laughs> so sad. She apologized but Jill couldn't. No. <laughs> It's so sad. Yep. Isn't there anyone else? Anything else in the letter? Maybe in the back. This is just like your sister. I spent days worried about this letter, not wanting to open it for the fear of what it might contain. I lost sleep and appetite thinking about it. And after all these worries, after all these problems, after all these years not talking to her, she sends me a letter, a fucking letter of all things, and she just says sorry. Sorry for why? Don't get mad, Jill. It's so sweet. <laughs> sorry for what? For a fight? For not talking all these years? I'm fucking pissed. <laughs> Are you laughing? I'm sorry, I just... I remember all the times my sis provoked you that way. Like the time where she gave you chocolates like 1, 2, and 4 during Valentine's Day. And you were pissed about the lack of 3. Or the time when you left an unopened beer bottle on the table. She sneakily opened and, and took a sip. She didn't tell you she did it and you were confused all day long. She always bragged she knew she, like the back of my hand. Back of her hand. If that letter was supposed to piss me off like that, I guess she had all the rights to brag. Maybe she was sincere, though. She did express to me that she was sorry on more than one occasion. She did, huh? You told me she died from localized nano machine rejection, right? In her heart, yeah. Instead of the massive rejection that always makes the news, her case was more focused. They usually amputate or replace the part and call it a day, but organs are different. The condition made her susceptible to transplant rejection. Not to mention artificial hearts and genetic treatments are out of that question. Yep. Uh, the thing is, apparently she suffered that since she was 18, but kept it a secret from everyone. Why? Hell if I know. I was angry to learn that she hid it. Uh, why didn't she tell me? Was it to avoid worrying me? Was she ashamed? What was it? Uh, wait, how did she listen normally then? She had to use a serum, uh, shots near her heart every three days. Apparently the serum burns like hell. The shot even left her with a nasty mark where she had to apply them. So the thing near her left breast wasn't a birthmark. And the rejection was what ended up killing her? The nano machine rejection was what ended up killing her, but they couldn't find out what was made her so vulnerable. Doctor said she might have missed a shot, or the shots made other defenses grow weaker. The condition uh, could have just gone nuts out of nowhere, or maybe it was blood pressure. Maybe it was a regular heart attack and the rejection acted afterwards. They don't know. She kept it a secret from everyone, so nobody knows. Maybe if she uh, had told me about it, I could have helped her. Maybe she'd still be alive. Oh, no, she's crying. Maybe she wouldn't have faced it alone, so just dying in her sleep. I'm thinking about it. What ifs won't bring her back. Eh. I spent so much time hanging myself with what ifs after you told me she died. What if I waited to cool down a bit back then? What if I just swallowed my fears and at that very moment? What if I had apologized earlier? What if I had given a chance to the research and see thing back then? At that moment, uh, and that moment just increased uh, threefold after I lashed out at you the other day. But today I realized something. Having touch regrets with the dead is a hollow effort. You're alive, you're here. I can make amends with you, but I can't make amends with the dead. I can't apologize to her like I can apologize to you right now. Jill? Lenore, she's she's resting now. She's just resting after having that heart condition all these years. 
She didn't have to face it alone, though. She only... So, let's celebrate her life and achievements. If we are to mourn, let's mourn her together. If we are to honor her, we'll do it together. Together. Well, Nori has a fun... It was a fun, loving person. The best we can do right now is to lighten up, even if it was only for a moment. I need to ask, though. Did she really start to complain about chest pain shortly after I left? No. Oh. She didn't get visibly worse after you left or anything. Everything was actually too sudden. Uh, she did complain about chest pain from time to time, but that actually goes uh, way back before you left. Back then, she thought it was just acid reflux or something. Guys, I even blamed her death on you. I was just too angry back then, and part of me just wanted to put the blame on someone or something. And you didn't deserve that. I'm sorry. Hey, I'm sorry too, you know. We both have things to apologize for. Don't think too much about it. I shouldn't have. Uh, I should have been more mature and not shouted at you either, so let's just call, call all of this under the bridge, shall we? Uh, of course I am. So how did you find me exactly? Hey, um, well, have you heard the uh, message board dangers slash you? Yeah, I have. Yeah, actually, yeah, the, I have. Yeah. Well, the truth is that I visit from time to time, and the other day I read a thread discuss the bar, and the description of the bartender just sounded just like you. Are you mad? No, not mad. More like dumbfounded. Uh, hey, Jill, can you tell me what the problem was back then? What sparked that fight? Weren't you happy with my sister? Well, um, back then I didn't. E I didn't know what to do with myself after I graduated college. I went in and pretty much hated the last couple of years there. It's not far-fetched to think that I only tolerated there being because your sister was with me. Uh, had she stopped supporting my studies, I would have uh, quit right then and there. And then after graduating, I got a very good job after and, she's uh, and she accepted that on my behalf in no time. Uh, she just kept saying that it was the best for me and my future, but I was livid. Why did she have to do that? I hated it. I didn't even know if I wanted to go there, but she still insisted so much. Or she was forcing me that burden on me. And then Maya became our future, and she started talking about marriage. You were going to get married? I don't think we ever took it seriously. It was just something that kept she kept mentioning. Not like we didn't think about that down the line, but she mostly teased me with it. Uh, but the thought saying it scared the shit out of me. I loved her, but I didn't think I was ready for such a commitment, especially considering what she did. Uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I wasn't going to let her decide such a big thing for me. I mean, she could really, she could be really pushy from time to time. Like I said, I pretty much had passed college thanks to being with her, and that was partly because she was so pushy. Uh, even if she had the best intentions, she could be abrasive from time to time. And it rained down on me in that moment. She took it upon herself to make that choice for me. Uh, what would have happened? What would have stopped if once? What would that have stopped once we have gotten married? What if she suddenly decided to craft my life for her needs after marriage? I knew her, but she could, uh, but she. I knew her, she would do it thinking it was the best for me, but what about my freedom, my say on the matter? So that's why you stopped loving Lenore? No, no, no. I never stopped loving her, which is why it hurt so much, but you have to understand. I didn't want to wake up 40 years old and work in a job I hate, just out of routine, getting used to it. Uh, I wanted to break from everything for a while and put my thoughts in order, regroup myself, think carefully about what to do next. I can understand. I sometimes felt like the same, although I'm not even in college. Uh, so what's led to you two fighting, huh? Uh, you know, the word fight makes it sound like we exaggerate, exchange blows or something. Uh, it's all silly when I think back to it. Tragically silly. Maybe I was the one who started the fight, getting all defensive about not wanting to take that offer. Perhaps if I didn't overreact to her argument over wasting this huge opportunity, maybe she wouldn't have lashed out at me this bad. Uh, it could have been avoided if I had just kept a cool head and talked to her about that. My sister said something like that. I told her she mentioned, uh, I told she she mentioned on more than one occasion how sorry she was about the whole thing, right? I should have listened to her in the end, but instead I kept pushing her. I should have kept a cool head instead of letting my jealousy take the best of me. It was her offer, not mine. I should have stopped projecting myself so much onto her. Something like that. <laughs> oh, no worry. You were quite hot, the hotheads, you, me, and my sis. You were supposed to be the mature one, you know? Play your role correctly. <laughs> but why didn't you come back, Jill? Did you end up hating us that much? Did, you, did the break include us, too? No, it's just that... Remember when your sister was giving a class and you broke a window? Uh, uh, how you didn't want to see her for fear out of being scolded? Well, my sister wouldn't have scolded you. But I was afraid, dead afraid. I couldn't bring myself to face your sister. But I faced her back then and I was like seven at the time. Why couldn't you do it? It's not quite the same. In perspective, uh, no matter what reason I come up with, it'll never make sense. Everything sounds very stupid when I look back, you know? Not that it makes things easier. I won't ever get to speak to her ever again, and that feels bad because it's stupid. <laughs> I swear you and my sister are meant for one each other. You both moved on after all of that, but neither had the courage to go back and say you're sorry. And like I said, braiding myself over the past mistakes won't bring her back. 
I miss her so much, though. We were together all the time, always talking about dumb stuff. I want to call my parents unless, uh, but I want to call my parents useless. But she was the one I could always talk to. Uh, I feel her absence every day. Everything is just so quiet now. She was an amazing person. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah, she was an amazing person. Uh, Morning her is fine now, but we should be celebrating her life. If she was here, she would have told us there's no fun in sulking for so long. She told you that all the time. The same way she told you to stop rubbing things in people's faces, both figuratively and literally. Hey, I was eight back then. So let's have a toast in on her honor, shall we? A toast. She can't drink. Yeah, let me get you a drink. A drink? Don't worry, trust me. Something toast got to be probably something sweet. Let's do a sugar rush. There's no alcohol in it. Grab this for a sec. Oh, uh, okay. Ahem. <laughs> Oh, no, right? <laughs> I know you're watching from this beyond right now as I give a drink to your little sister. It's obvious to me that we both meant to make amends at some point, but we never got around to it. I can't apologize to you anymore, but I can at the very least make you rest easier so that I'll look out for Gabby in your absence. I make sure Gabby grows into a fine woman, just like you were. I'll always be there for her. I'll be sure the little brat doesn't face the same problem you and I had. Hey, <laughs> want to add anything? Uh, I'll always miss her. Don't say it to me, say it to her. That's a bit... Come on, just this once. I'll, I'll always miss you, sis. Sis. Sis, you idiot. Why did you keep that secret for so long? Idiot, idiot. I always told you everything. Was not enough, you idiotic idiot? Uh, hey, Jill, promise you won't make... Uh, you won't be like that knucklehead that you won't keep stuff like that to yourself. Only if you promise the same to me. And, and promise me you won't fight. I can't do that. <laughs> Yeah, you and I are both too thick-headed. Sooner or later, we'll clash in some opinion. But I can promise is I won't run away like last time. We'll cool off and talk it over like the adults we are. <laughs> yeah, she's in middle school, not an adult. Let's face it, you've been more mature than I have. <laughs> hey, do you mean what you said, that you'll look after me? i always be here for you, Gabby. I mean, I'm not Lenore, but I wouldn't dare leave my little sister alone. Jill? Hey, wasn't this a toast? Right, uh, for Lenore, faithful sister and girlfriend. Cheers. Cheers. Jesus. Um, so, about this drink. Can I drink it? Do you like it? Take a sip. It's not bad. Why not drink it then? You're with an adult. Might as well break the alcohol taboo. Isn't, there's no alcohol. I didn't put alcohol in here. Right. Uh, another thing about it. Didn't your sister give you a beer once as a prank? Oh yeah, that. It was April Fool's. I should have known better that she offered me apple soda. I put bu uh, bubblegum on the soles of all her shoes in retaliation. Uh, she walked funny and my jaw hurt for the rest of the day. Yeah, but did you know that you got my drink at that time? Huh? Uh, she gave me a beer and it turned out to be apple soda. <laughs> oh. <laughs> did you get back at her? Well, oh, is Anna gonna come up? I did hide all the dildos in the house that night only to find out she knew how to use a cucumber. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and as a follow-up, she used the same cucumber in it. Oh, that's, that's, that's gross. She said, so, how do you like eating me? Jesus, chill. I'll, I'll tell you when you're older. <laughs> or never at all. Yeah, definitely. Hey Gabby, do your parents know you're here? And they think I'm at Clary's actually. Who? Oh, she's my best friend at school. And this, uh, is it just Claire or Clary? I think it's just Clary. Knows you're using her as an excuse, right? Of course. How would she cover me for otherwise? That's nice. True. Uh, we go to her house afterwards. To be honest, I didn't think of that far. Maybe I will. I do live in another district, but uh, Claire doesn't live close by, so well, it can't be helped. I live nearby and the streets aren't exactly safe at night. Why not stay with me tonight? Are you sure? I don't live in a mansion, but I'd say it's comfy enough at least to spend the night. Sure, I'd love to stay with you. <laughs> uh, hey, does your dad still have that uh, bakery? His bread was really good. Yep, he opened a second branch last year, so he was looking to expand. To think he got into a partnership with a friend at a motor district. The guy saw an opportunity after he was in motor district has almost no bakeries. I still remember, him, uh, remember when your sister introduced me to him. He started shouting, I knew it, I fucking knew you were a lesbian. <laughs> Mark one for daddy. Uh, I think he did. The, uh, he had this bet with an acquaintance of ever since my sister was 12 years old. Well, dad's his sister's and the girl's the acquaintance didn't believe him. He bet a beer on whether he was right or not. That beer bottle was still in the fridge, it's labeled sweet victory. Oh my god. Uh, your mom and Lenore never made, made up, did they? Uh... I guess that wasn't as simple as uh, said one too many things argument. Um, Mom was always obsessed with high society and her circle of friends. A lesbian daughter was a no-no. Oh, I'm still on my sister's side for that one though. 
mom didn't reject her because uh, she herself was homophobic. She did it because her friends were. Uh, to mom, the opinion of a circle of her friends were worth more than her own daughter. How did she react to her death? Don't know. Mom and dad broke up two years ago. They did. They never got married, so there was no proper divorce. I haven't seen her since August, I think. Did you two fight too? No, we just kind of showed up. Must have felt alone, huh? I never... Uh, it wasn't... Uh, what? Fuck, I didn't read that. Uh, a bit, but I'm not alone anymore, thanks to you. Huh? I thought this was going to be a party here. Ama, over here. Party? <laughs> Small New Year's celebration. Want to stay for it? I don't want a kid to burden. Don't worry, you won't. You'll only get cool for the night, though. No alcohol. <laughs> I'll give us time to catch up even more if I can introduce you to some friends. Are you in? If you don't mind me. Great. Don't introduce her to Dorothy. <laughs> oh. I'll come here. There's someone I want to introduce you to. Don't introduce her to Dorothy. <laughs> Screen's getting white. I can't click or anything, so. Just letting it go. Yay. <laughs> Who the fuck was Anna? <laughs> uh. I really like that. Uh, Fernando Damas? I don't know. Uh, I can't make- I don't- I don't know, I feel like I don't wanna scroll them. So, Fernando Damas and Christopher Ortiz seem to be, be the big two. So, yeah, original concept, yeah. Good job, you two. I loved it. Uh... I'm probably gonna have to like Google who the hell Hot Anna was and what that was all about, but eh, because uh, there's probably some things that I maybe missed, but yeah, I I really love that. <laughs> I like this stuff. Uh, I wish there was more like sort of the scenes that we had with uh, Donna at the end of chapter one. I really really like that. I was hoping the party would be more like that, but it's alright. Brian Quet. That's a weird last name. <laughs> no, he's also the director of whatever games. Business cat. What? <laughs> a business cat. That's alright. Uh. <laughs> H.I.O. Miguel Aguado. Everyone who pre-ordered. You right there. Hi. I love the game. You did a good job, everybody. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I was, uh, oh. Mom, dad, family, and friends. Thank you for all the support. This is for you. Aw. I'm gonna have to look up who the fuck Anna was and look what she was all about. That was very weird. Because she started showing up more and more near the end. Um, yeah, she showed up at the very, very beginning. Was being weird as usual. She keeps calling us Joe. Acts like we're friends. I don't know. I'm assuming it's symbolic or something. Um, you know what? I'll look it up right now because I still have some time. Uh, yay, 11. Anna Graham. Anna Graham is a mysterious female entity who appears to Julie, or, yeah, Julian Steiner or Jill on several occasions. She cannot physically interact with her surroundings, and only two people have actually seen her, one being the aforementioned Jill and a Willem called Astana. Yeah. Uh, although Rebecca Willow has also heard her sub- Who's Rebecca Willow? Oh, it's Dorothy. Rebe Dorothy's real name is Rebecca Willow. Did you have fun? Yeah, I did. Oh, is this Anna talking? I can't- I clicked. Yep, I also got to meet a cat boomer. Why did your boss hug you, though? Oh, this is in the game. I got- uh... I was gonna say, why did your boss hug you, though? That's, uh, I get this is just Jill and Gabby. She's that kind of person. Now it's sleep. You were dozing off back there. Hmm. 
music's nice. You're right. Good night, Jill. Play some more tomorrow. Good night. Oh, <laughs> so sweet. Oh. Gracias. <laughs> 2016. This game coming out 2016. Wait, 2016? Were people saying based in 2016? I said thank you, based God. I didn't know that was that old. I was wondering just been really known it recently. Alright. Back to reading um uh Anna's thing. Can I go through this? I'm I'm like trying to read my phone and also look up and read to make sure you don't miss anything. Uh she breaks the fourth wall in several instances, showing that she is the only character aware that she is in a video game appearance. Uh, Anna is average height, young woman with short black hair and purplish eyes, as well as fair skin and a fairly uh, substantial bust size. She's also seen wearing a black Japanese sailor uniform that appears purple due to the bars of lighting. Oh. Oh. Shit. Stop reading. February. I can't believe you actually made me do that sleepover thing. <laughs> Didn't have to accept, you know. Shut up. I'm having a good time. <laughs> See, even at Gabby's having fun, relax a bit. Yeah, whatever. You know, Alma, you remember me? Oh, I gotta get Alma's ending. Wait, there's multiple endings? Oh, fuck. It says get Alma's ending. Oh, shit. You know, Alma, you remember me a bit of my sis. I do, how? You always manage to get a reaction from Jill. Sis uh, always said that Jill knowledge in your press is the best way to know she likes you. <laughs> You're talking too much, Gabby. Aw. It's different with you, though. With my sis, Jill is more frustrated. Like this one time when she brought a shirt that you're talking too much, little girl. A shirt that what? That had a pick of a cucumber on it. A cucumber. Um. Ow! What did you just do with my hair? Sorry, I got stuck in one of my fingers. Seriously. Uh. So I'm a bit like Lenore, right? No, you just remind me of her a bit. Moreover, my sister was um as, as, ass. What this girl is trying to say is that your tits and ass. You could build a Lenore half out of mass. That just means that there's enough to share with the both of you. Share. You're talking too much, Alma. Just keep him still going. I guess this is where we part ways, huh? Oh, the bar is closing. Sadly, I'm bound. I'm bound to the city. I can only falsify my identity officially around here. I really want to thank you, Chief, for the second chance you gave me. If I were to cross, if we were to cross paths again, I <laughs> get to the good ending. I got achievement. And for <laughs> the achievement is called, and now, for something completely different. Uh, yeah, we're leaving for like a week and a half or something, don't be so dramatic. But I... And you're taking care of my apartment, we will cross paths because I live there. The time you're setting up a useless very well could be used uh, asking me things about the place. Like where the switches and valves are. But I already know, they're in that control panel you made. But I like talking about the control panel, I'm proud of it. Speaking of obsessive likes... Jill, stop... Uh, stop calling Art Damage. She'll take care of the four ball just and fine. I'm not worried about him. I'm worried about me. I've never been away from four this long. I don't know what I'll do. You'll be just fine. You did pretty well for at least 25 years before finding him. Yeah, but we're leaving. Oh yeah, before I forget. I left you a box of condoms on the first row of the desk, Jill. You what? You <laughs> hey, if he wants to bring his new girlfriend or whatever here, I want him to be ready. Oh, but for like one condition, if you're gonna fuck like rabbit, stay away from my room. I have too many pics of my emoto there. <laughs> Why'd you call him? Alright, whatever. I don't want their eyes soiled. Why'd you call him emoto? I just say little sister. Emo who? Yeah, little sister. Uh, then just say little sister. Yeah, whatever. First stop, Panama. Oh yeah, they mentioned that uh, we were going to um. I kind of achievement. Please come again and thank you. For yeah, I forgot Jill and Donna were talking about that. Um, here you can save heart data. Loading heart data from the title screen on a bar will let you start over from day one while keeping your items and money. Thank you for playing. So just... Day one at New Game Plus, alright. Alright, this should be the main menu, right? Oh, come on. 
Yeah, it's just yeah, it's just find the intro. All right, so that was it. Okay, good. Back to reading who the hell Anna is. Um, a Japanese city that appears to be purple, as shown from her shadow and her backstory, it is implied that she is uh, missing her right arm. Personality. She is known to be very mischievous, as shown when she is messing with Jill and Alma when visiting, making jabs at Alma's breasts, and even offering to raise her sweater. However, behind that, she is shown to be observant and considerate. Shown in Dorothy's ending, where she still uh, she tells Jill to take care of Becky. Right. So Becky was the that was I was right, right? Becky it was Becky and Deal. Before the events of the game. All right. So this is the background. So I don't, I'm assuming there's gonna there's multiple endings. So just. I don't know. If you don't want to just, like, uh, read this, let's go. Before the events of the game, Anna was suffering from nanomachine rejection. While she was in the hospital, she got into a romantic relationship with Falnate, another female patient who was suffering from nanomachine rejection. But sadly, her girlfriend did not survive her condition. Anna herself managed to recover from the affliction, uh, but on her way out of the hospital, she was hit by a truck and died. It's not entirely clear how the current Anna came to be, although she retained all her memories from before her death. At some point, she started uh, started coming to Valhalla and teasing Jill, possibly because Jill is one of the few people who can fully see and hear her. Uh, early design gallery trivia. Apart from the title screen, Anna is the first character to appear in the game. Yep. Uh, Anna wears a pair of jeans under her skirt. Anna is a lesbian, stating boys are icky. When the player starts a new game plus, Anna explains how money carries over from the previous pay play, though, and gives hints to how to get all the endings. Oh, that's good. There is conflicting information regarding Anna's date of birth, and a Twitter post by the game developer she said that her birthday was the first of August. But in the extra night demo, an I the extra night demo, an ID when she hands Jill states her birthday to be twelfth of August. In the extra night demo, I guess there's an extra night demo. I don't know what that is. Oh yeah, there's this plus Anna. Hey four, leave. God, there's so much. I need to stop reading. Hey four, leave Gabby alone. And let her sleep. Happy New Year. I said Happy New Year. Hem. I said. I heard you say it the first time. Oh well. This is cool though. And answer the first time. Would you don't be rude? You trespass into my house and I'm the rude one. I didn't trespass. I just showed up. That's trespassing. <laughs> trespassing implies passing. I just appeared here. Thus, there is no passing. And how exactly did you do that? Oh, hey, you're talking to me directly. And don't change the subject. I'm so happy that you're not pulling that whole telepath crap. You're the one being a telepath. But I can't read minds. I can read words, however. <laughs> yeah, because she can. She knows that she's in a game. Also, Gabby sleeping up here is cute. Uh, no, what I mean is that I'm not the one reading thoughts. So I'm not. I uh, forget it. Why are you here? I wanted to wish you a happy new year. So you were bored. Being bored has nothing to do with me wishing you happy holidays. But it helps. I won't deny that. Still, you deserve some congratulations, Joe. You closed off an old chapter of your life and grew as a person. That always deserves some cheers. In fact, let's make a toast. Mind if I grab a beer? I do, actually. I don't want to clean beer off the floor. You don't know if that's what will happen. Trust me, I know. But the toast is the thought that counts. Let's leave it at that. Fine, sheesh. Oh, hey, kitty. Hey, four. I wonder if four can see you. With cats, you never know. If <laughs> you have to know the little thing. Uh, he might see me, or you might be seeing an, inter an interesting speck of dust. Hey, Joe, let's play a game. What kind of game? Truth or truth? <laughs> Do you mean truth or dare? No, dare's uh, with me when it goes to fun, I'm guessing. We can ask questions to each other, and we can't lie. You'll even get your ever so precious dialogue choices. Ain't that nice? The what now? I'm thinking out loud. Don't mind me. Right. Will you keep your word on that? I won't. I don't lie. Fine. I'll play with you. Great. You start. Um. How much of your story is true? What are you? Just what are you? A cute girl. That's not what I mean. Well, I'm also from a Catholic family, although I'm not religious. Not what I meant either. I'm also very gay. I like girls a lot. I could have figured you want to take the question seriously. Yeah, but did uh, but did you think that maybe there are those are the answers I have? Hmm. These things I know about myself. Why am I like this? Is not one of those things. I got out of the hospital, got hit by something, here I am. Why am I in the state? Hell if I know. Sorry if I sounded rude. You were just charming your usual <laughs> you were just your charming usual self, Joe. Uh well then my turn. Do you like your boss? I do. No, do you like like your boss? Hmm. 
Both of you got, uh, both of you, uh, just, just go, mm-hmm, or just, hmm. I can't tell between difference between hmms. Both of you go to a romantic dinner. The mood is right. Do you say you love her? Well, the mood escalated. You're both nude in a room. Do you have sex? Um, why so hesitant all of a sudden? Because you took me off guard. No, that's not it. Do you really like your boss like that? I do. Good. I don't know why I said good. I mean, it's good because, I mean, I, f I thought that entire game. So, okay, let's say you have the chance to have sex with blondie sweater cup. Sweater pups. Oh, you're talking about Alma. I'd do it. Do you see the hesitation now? I can't believe you just have a teen crush in your boss. It's not a... a you like her and love her, but has to stay on the thought of fucking. You admire her and want her to be with her, but it won't go deeper. That's called friendship. Edgy non-teen crush. Let's move on to the next question before you short circuit. I'm not even going to see you. I don't know. I want to ask all of them, but... Okay, why am I the only one that can see you? Don't be so pretentious. You're not the only one that can see me. You're the only one among the people close to you. Still, why? Beats me. I don't even know why I'm like this. I do have a theory, though. Maybe the ones that could see me are the ones I wish could see me. How so? Today I entered the bar. I thought you were cute. Maybe I wanted to tell you, uh, tell me so hard that you were able to. But it was hard to contain my surprise, to be honest. I've tried to get some people to see me, but maybe something holds me back. So you make th things happen with your mind? It's still a theory. I don't have any solid basis for these speculation speculations. I mean, Beth could see me, so who's Beth? A very nice girl. Speaking of nice girls, what's so cool? Who is fucking letter? What's so cool about your boss? How so? What makes you all giddy about her? Um, <laughs> well, she's so strong, you know? Not only physically, but mentally too. She's said fast, reliable, charismatic, fun to be with. She's everything I'm not. She makes you feel safe when you're, while you're with her. I mean, how could you not see it? I haven't spent enough time with her, I guess. Jeez, you got pretty excited there. Maybe. What? I don't... <laughs> What's that? Did you have any hobbies? Do not talk to me in past tense. Sorry, do you have any hobbies? Well, back then I had a solid body. I like tabletop games. Really? Yeah, like the one where you push someone on it, raise her legs, and oh god. That's one we were playing in Monopoly. <laughs> Uh, anything for Athena Avenue? What's that mean? I don't know. Uh, the only things I remember like doing were pranks. No shit. <laughs> it's so fun to see how people react to them. The setup, the uh, deception, the payoff, it's like art. Right? Uh, I did have some limits though. If I knew something would make someone cry, it's out of the question. If it puts them in any risk, it's out of the question. If it causes trouble for too many outsiders, it's out of the question. That sounds sensible. Of course, pranks are not good if, uh, are no good if only the prankster has fun with them. Then you're just a bully. Any pink pranks you were get doing? In elementary school, I hit a bee in a boy's backpack. He was allergic. <laughs> Nothing terrible happened, but yeah. My turn then. How was the party? I was busy. You busy? I can be busy. I mean, I saw you get your big moment and talk about cucumbers. <laughs> Cough. <laughs> that was a break from other stuff I was doing. Is uh, is this here another break? This is a well-earned rest. Good for you. Uh, the party was fun. Not a crazy thing, just a chill time. Food, drinks, friends, and a couple of dogs. Uh, boss almost burned the place down, setting off for totally legal fireworks. Uh, Gil brought his girlfriend, I still can't believe who she was. Uh, Dorothy brought her acquaintances too. Really nice people, if a bit gaudy. Alma and I... What? <laughs> you and sweater pups or what? Nothing, I just realized how nice it is to felt say I have friends. Uh, holy shit, that's some corny ass line right there. It's true though. Uh, it's the first time the friendship has felt real. There's people I can trust, people that trust me. People say I get invested in outside my family. That's such an awesome feeling. Like I said, that's goddamn cheesy. And instead, that's it. Am I your friend, Joe? Maybe. Give it more time. <laughs> no, but seriously, you and Sweater Pups did what? Take pics? Boring. Were they nude? No. <laughs> boring. Well, the next question. Well, you're yawning. I sure as hell ain't boring, so it must be because of the hour. I'll let you be for now. Hey, Anna. Um, you have a happy new year, too. And if you want to bother me, I do get bored in here from time to time. So, uh, yeah, that. You called me by my name. On second thought, don't be like that. <laughs> I'll take you off and pester you some more later. Hell, I'll do it even if you say nothing. Oh dear. Hey Joe, can you open the door for me? Just disappear like how you came in. Come on, humor me. Fine. There. Thank you. Bye Joe. Take care. Sometimes I wonder if this is a sign to stop drinking. <laughs> Are you drunk right now? A bit. That didn't answer any of my questions. Uh. Uh. In the Action Night demo, Anna glitches several times. During these glitches, you can see the phrase, maybe this time it will end on a happier note right in front of Anna. 
because there's on a did I click demo? No. Yawn. Man, such a slow night. At least I'm not serving dogs. Normally this would be where a dog shows up like a cheap punchline. I guess not. <laughs> Speaking of dogs, I wonder where hell where the hell hell's a gill. Hey Donna. Board Ah <laughs> sorry did I wake you up? I wasn't sleeping, my eyes were open. You went to college, right? You know how your eyes open means nothing. Don't worry, I don't blame you. It's been a really long time since we had such a slow night. In fact, I think the last time we had a night this slow is because, uh, this before you started working here. Really? Yeah, it happened when Robert was still working here. Who? My first employee, the poor idiot, bought a levitation poem and threw himself off the building. Uh, as it turned out, the potion actually worked. Come again? He tried rising in the air and couldn't stop. The later found his body streaming across the nose of a commercial flight that was on its way to uh, Conjuvania. But anyway, should you really dismiss that so easily? <laughs> we didn't have a single client that night, not at a lost soul asking for directions, but then suddenly, a kid shows up. He was obviously underage, but I was bored, so I decided to let him order something. I gave him one cameratrain free drink. I mean, even I was letting him order, I wasn't about to give alcohol to an underage boy. And when the time came for him to pay his tab, he realized he didn't have any money. He then yanked his shirt over his head, started screaming he's a ghost, and tried to escape. So I kicked him so hard that he flew out the bar, and I told him ghosts shouldn't feel pain. Boss, did you really kick an underage kid? Of course not, I was just giving him a warning and made him wash a couple of dishes. The fact that you even thought for a moment that I'll kick a young innocent child hurts me to an end, you know? Anyway, just keep it up sooner or later. Uh, someone will show up sooner or later. I sure hope so. Hold on, come to think of it, aren't Gil's checks made out to Robert? No. Cough. Well, at least the story killed a couple of minutes. I think I'll, I don't know, start the classes here or something. We had a fedora shaped glass. Anyone here? Ah, uh, sorry, I'll be right out. Okay, Anna, are you okay? I'm fine, yeah. Welcome to Valhalla, what can I get you? Um, something around. Are you sure you're oh, so This is the first time we've met Anna, it seems like. Well, seeing how I'm old enough to get eat solid food, I'm gonna guess the drinking won't be a problem. You know that's not what I meant. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm old enough to drink. I turned 21 not too long ago, actually. Okay, that's what I, that's what I meant. Still don't believe me? What do you need me to give you? I need a sleep deprived, I must be sleep deprived. What's this deja vu feeling? It's fine, don't worry. What can I get you? I feel like having a sugar rush. Sure, come here. Up. Just see you on the... This is... I, I turned my timer off because I thought I was going to end the episode. I didn't know there's so much more here. Thanks. Hold on, this doesn't have any alcohol, does it? Nope. You really think I'm underage, don't you? Yep. I'll have you know I'm old enough to get pregnant. That's sadly not relevant here. Uh, on second thought, this is actually good. Um, I mean, don't underestimate me. Do you really think I look that young? I do, but you're not you're not young enough to be considered underage. Then why don't you give me alcohol? Because I wanted to mess with you. <laughs> mess with a client. Do you usually do that? Only if it looks like you might take it in their stride. Still, why are you so angry at the idea that I might think you look so young? That's... I mean, the only uh, people who uh, don't like being mistaken for someone younger are young people. But to be fair, you still look older than 95% of our regulars. <laughs> Uh, that would mean you serve drinks to people who look like they're 13 years old or something, Dorothy. Yep. <laughs> uh, Alright, let's get this out of the way. Please show me your ID. Sure. So, Anna Graham. Seems everything's in order, miss. Anna Graham? Anna Graham, why have I heard that name before? Go ahead, just try to make a joke I haven't heard yet. I'll politely refuse. No, I'm serious, go ahead. People think that's easy so that never, they never make jokes about my name. I'm still going to politely refuse. You're no fun. So what's your name, Miss Bartender? My name? You saw my name, I have the right to know yours. Fair enough, I'm Jill. Jill what? Just Jill? Yeah, but what's your full name? Just call me Jill. Fine, I'll just pretend Jill is a, uh, is a way of saying your uh, your name is actually Johan Egunsen alone. Actually, I'll shorten it to Joe. Uh, whatever floats your boat. Say, Joe, this place is all looks desolate. Joe, she says. It's been a slow day, a really, really slow day. I'm actually glad you should have, I was growing bored as hell. I mean, it's not like we're usually always bustling with activity, but this is unusual even for here. So I take this as an popular place then. We have our regulars, but it's not like the bars are the mainstream. Still, I like this place. It's comfy and, I don't know, it makes you feel safe. Weird, I mean, I felt that way too, but this place usually gives other people the opposite impression. Can't blame them though. This isn't exactly the best part of the city. Uh, that's a shame. I really like how isolated this place feels. You can't hear the sounds of the city. It's nice. 
Then again, you can see I have some exper experience with isolated places, so that might just be nostalgia. Nostalgia, huh? Speaking of coming in here, now that I think about it, you didn't ask for my ID when I first came in. Why didn't you do that when you were so suspicious? Well, personally, I was bored, figures. And second, I felt like you were of legal, legal age. Um, how? I've had a lot of kids come in thinking that they're going to go to, uh, just, uh, I've had a lot of kids come in thinking they could get away with ordering a drink, but they're too nervous or jumpy. I don't usually give drinks to kids like that. Uh, they don't know what they're dealing with. What if they're not like that, but still underage? If they at least look like they're above legal age, I would be able to live with myself, I guess. I won't give I won't give them anything if I know they're still kids, but hey, I'm bound to be fooled sometime. So I'm guessing I wasn't jumpy. Yep, you were glitchy. I see. Hey Joe, now that I can now that you know I can drink legally, can I get another one? What do you want? Something sweet. This is so weird. Uh Two, three, four, five, six. This is so weird. I thought the game was over. <laughs> but I don't know how long this is either because I turned my timer off. Because I thought it was over. <laughs> ah, one sweet drink. Thanks. You know, if all drinks are like this, I'd be I'd be afraid to turn you into an alcoholic. Please don't joke about that. How, how can you say that? You're a bartender. A bartender doesn't want her clients to become alcoholics. Just like how our personal trainers don't want these trainers to turn into steroid junkies. Oh yeah, I guess you're right. Still, this one's really nice. Hey Joe, do you drink? I suppose, yeah, it'd be weird for a bartender not to drink, you know? I don't know, I've met dentists with bad teeth. Bartenders who don't drink totally would make sense. That's silly. It's like being a vegan chef at her in a BBQ. Uh, you think so? Yeah, I mean, it's not a matter of whether you can eat or drink, whether it's, uh, drink whatever it is you're making. It's more like, why do you, why do it if you don't like it? Uh, yeah, I guess that's true. A dentist might have bad teeth, but you can still like work in dentistry. But why bother bartending if you don't like alcohol? See? <laughs> um, something wrong. I just noticed you haven't said my name yet. I haven't, what? Aside from when you read my idea out loud, you haven't said my name. Meanwhile, I've called you out yours like a gazillion times now. The wrong name, though. Well, I haven't had, had the need to say your name. Come on, humor me. Say my name. Why? Say my name. Say my name. <laughs> Anna. One more time. Anna. Yes, now one more time. Jesus Christ, that's creepy. Nana. It happened again. Maybe I need glasses? Did I just see someone glitch out in the past? Oh, come on. Why do you want me to say your name? I like hearing people call me by my name. It feels personal and fuzzy. Yeah, but asking people to say your name like that is a bit... quirky. <laughs> creepy. I don't know about that. There's a certain someone who would uh, wake me up in the morning saying my name. Your name is important once you know someone's name, the gap between that person, you disappears. Uh, once you give names to things, you start seeing them as an important member of the family. So what if it's creepy? It's still nice. Stop calling me Joe and use my name then. Say, Anna, can I ask you something? You called me by my name, so sure. About your arm. What about it? Oh yeah, I'm lacking one. Did you say the word creepy reminds you of its absence? Actually, I've been wanting to ask you about it since you came in. At least I'm uncomfortable. Uh, at, least, at least be uncomfortable for a second. I'm trying to get a rinse out of you, rise out of you. Sheesh. So what is it? How did I lose it? If it's not too personal, it isn't. I'm actually proud of the tail. Why? You're looking at a proud survivor of nanomachine machine injection. Really? I thought this was something doctors detected while a fetus was still in the womb. Yes and no. There's actually two types of nanomachine machine injection. The first one is the most common. They usually detect it while you're still in the fetus, and there's the. That's when they turn into a cat boomer. Uh. The other one can sometimes appear in the teenage years. It's incredibly rare, but it's still possible. So that arm, the yeah, machine rejection basically causes your body to attack itself. Uh, to you start ripping apart your organs malfunction. I was lucky in the end. All I lost was an arm and a handful of toes. Get it? A handful because I lost five. Sure. Anyway. <laughs> I have a prosthetic arm, but it's in maintenance right now. I see. Uh, it's a bit weird to be without it. I still feel like it's there. It's a ghost -lin. Uh, just a couple of hours ago, I tried to grab something, and I just stood there thinking my arm was doing something. But anyways, mind getting me another drink? We could, uh, keep talking about my stump after that. Um, right. What do you want? Just some classy. It's weird being in a bar and asking for a fancy drink. Right. This is... It's taking forever, but whatever. I'm intrigued. Or... Here. This looks expensive. Alright, I'm starting to have second thoughts of it right now. Just drink it. Ah, I just hit my knee on my desk. I'm starting to feel dizzy. That's nice. Is it? Uh, of course. I spent so much time in hospitals and whatnot, but now I'm just living my life, you know? I want to feel the good and the bad. No more being forced to sit quietly in a quarantine room. I can get that. 
quite quarantined. Uh, type 2 nanomachine injection patients are put in special chambers free from the nanomachine particles in the air that prevents them from being assimilated and aggravating the whole situation. To be fair, not all of my memories are in that chamber are bad. I mean, I did spend three, four years in, that, in one of those places. Really, that long. Well, I didn't go in for a genetic level treatment, so it was longer and a lot less expensive. I'm not going to complain, though. I'm alive thanks to all of that. And I, and, I left, and I left with so much fond memories, too. So was that meant with the whole feeling nostalgic and isolated place thing? Yep. Are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Just dizzy. Uh, hey, Joe. If I order two drinks, would you be willing to share one with me? Come again? To be honest, talking about the treatment and all that made me feel a bit lonely. Sorry if I, if I ask you something you can do, but I have to ask. It's not something I normally do, but... Ah, uh, what the hell, sure. Really? Yay. Alright then, I want a piano man and a piano woman. Alright. This is gonna be a long episode, if, even though I could have ended it a while ago, but... It's so weird. Which one do you want? Do you prefer the man or the woman? I'm fine with either, really. Okay, I'll pick the woman then. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, it says maybe this time will be a happier ending. Is that what it says? Alright, this is getting weird. <laughs> I said, cheers. <laughs> oh, cheers. Yeah. Huh. Are you okay? Hey, Joe. Do you th uh, why do you think bad things happen? It's a sudden question, how so? If there is a god, why do you think bad things happen? Are you in a competitive mood or something? <laughs> kind of. Uh... I remember a conversation in college where a classmate said we uh, give God too much flack. How so? Well, let's imagine a place where virtually nothing bad happens. If an, ex if an experience doesn't one-up the last good thing you enjoyed, you'll feel like it was a bad one. Even if you lived in a place where every good thing was one up by an even better good, past events would seem bad. Uh, eh, well, let's say, you, let's say you have chocolate. I like chocolate. Everyone does. My mom doesn't. Then she's a rare case. She also doesn't like pizza. Is she even human? Uh, sorry, I mean, damn it, where was I? Chocolate. Right. Uh, if you only get good chocolate, a slightly less good chocolate would taste awful. Yeah, I can see that. And if you only get good chocolate, if you get chocolate that tasted better each time, then the chocolates you ate in the past would worsen the memory. Oh yeah, now I get it. Oh yeah, sometimes bad is just a matter of contrast. That does, still doesn't justify the way bad things like death happen. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe we're just too concerned with smaller plans to look at the bigger picture. Maybe that death will trigger something else in the future. If, uh, if there's reincarnation, maybe that person is needed somewhere else. Maybe the world works in an entirely different way and we're limited by human reasoning. I don't know, I'm just a bartender. That's someone asked a metaphysical nature of death, it's not me. Uh, sometimes I think God is just a dick. <laughs> Giving me a disease, allowing me to survive, but only depriving me of my, sp of my special someone. I'm, uh, do you need context for all of that? The special someone, I mean. I'll connect the dots eventually, keep talking. You're obviously inventing some stuff here. Oh, uh, alright then. Uh, it's like God's, I don't know, it's like he's some edgy writer who likes having his characters suffer. I saw us in that reasoning because I uh, started expecting bad things. What well, if you're looking at it from the wrong angle? How so? Main characters usually have this tragic backstory, and we never really see in the beginning. Something that helps us move on, that gives us the motivation to power through the plot. Uh, maybe we're not living the girth of your story yet. Maybe this is the backstory getting set. Who knows what the future holds for you? Huh. That'd be nice. It'd be a bit better than my old outlook. Yeah, I like it a lot. I'm going to start thinking that way now. Today my origin story ends and my actual narrative begins. That's the spirit. Thanks, Joe. I feel a bit better. I'll be here if you need an ear. Glad to know that. I have to leave. Bye, Joe. Please come again. I will. Well, that was an entertaining diversion. Oh, boss, what happened? I came to ask you that. Huh? Did you just spend an hour talking to yourself? No, I didn't. There was a girl called Anna here. There was nobody here. I was actually coming to tell you they were getting close with night and all I like, can chat with thin air. A spirit to talk to. That can't be. She paid for her drinks. Or she says the money came from your account. But all the drinks that I served her... You mean the liquid that someone who is definitely not going to be has to clean off the floor? But, uh... Jill, you're worrying me. Are you okay? The last thing I need is another employee who will talk to herself. Yeah, I'm fine. I just... Are you sure there wasn't someone else here? I even checked the security cameras. You're here all by yourself this whole time. Maybe you're tired. You probably were just sleep talking to some tentacle or something. Yeah, maybe. Come on, I'll drive you home. Maybe you just need a rest. Yeah. What the hell just happened? That was... Still didn't answer a lot of questions. Uh, Alright, so back to the online and the demo, which is the, which was that was. Um, 
yeah, what it's saying when it, she glitches out is maybe this time it will end on a happier note. Um, there's also a start night that can be accessed after the player completes bonus nights and starts a new game plus. There the player is finally given dialogue options. At the bottom of Anna's ID card in the extra night demo, we can see a hexademical sequence of numbers. One translate gives us, I'm here. <laughs> when Anna is present, the TV in the upper right corner of the scene goes off and doesn't turn off even if you click on it. In addition, she appears, uh, her herself may appear on the TV at random. Yep. In the extra night demo, uh, Anna occurs to Jill to make an easy joke about her name that everyone avoids. The unspoken joke is that her name, Anna Graham, sounds like the word anagram. Okay. In start, Anna can mention that she likes a lot of things. She doesn't like stuffed animals, though. Pizza with a lot of mushrooms, stocking that go up to her thigh, on hair, even though herself prefers to keep it short. Uh, small animals, but she really likes big She really, She likes really big ones more. Uh, she really likes flowery perfume, tall girls, at least those taller than her. Uh, the smell of a freshly cut grass, the sound of a cat's purr, likes to laugh and make people laugh. And of course, I like Jill, or I want to be here. That still doesn't answer a lot of questions, but whatever. Uh, this is it. Oh, Gabby's on the main screen, didn't even notice that. That's adorable. But, um, yeah, I, I love this game. It was a blast to play, even though my throat is dying. And it was annoying to set up, but I can finally finish Yakuza now. Or Yakuza, whatever you want to say. <laughs> yeah. But, I don't know how long this episode was. I'm sorry that it's so long. I wanted to know who the hell Ana was, and I still don't know. <laughs> um, But, yeah, I, I loved it. Good job, everyone. That made the game. It was a blast. Uh... I know no one watches the videos. <laughs> I know no one watches these, but um, if you like, if there's any more games like these, leave them in the comments. I have already played Coffee Talk, so that's off the menu. But just these, uh, I guess they're visual novels in LA. I guess they are. I have the easy vision, obviously, give you dialogue options, but whatever. But all right, I love this game, so uh, bye. I don't know what to say.